Yeah. Well, we're um, our team's really excited to be playing tomorrow. We know we have a tough opponent, a uh, very, very um, a gritty opponent uh, who executes well on both ends of the court. So we know it's a huge challenge. But um, you know, our team's team's really excited, and hopefully, we'll be prepared and ready to go come seven o'clock tomorrow night. All right. Well, now to open up for questions for our student athletes, right over here on the right. Obviously, Belmont is a very guard-oriented team, and this is going to be a very guard-oriented game. Just what are, what are the guard slots, and you, of course, at the point guard spot going into this game? Um, looking at Belmont, like you said, they have really good guards, um, and they're able to score at many different levels. I think that the most important part um, for us tomorrow is just going to be able to be guarding one-on-one, -on -one, um, sitting down, guarding screens, um, being able to guard the three, and just uh, playing with heart. This is for either of you guys, but um, Belmont hit 12 threes last night, and Kentucky was able to do that against you guys in the SEC tournament. What do you feel like you guys maybe learned from that game that you'll carry into this one? I think um, having that Kentucky game, um, you know, hindsight now, but looking at it, we're able to guard. I think that we've been working on that, um, you know, in our time um, before playing yesterday. So just coming into the game, making sure that we're able to guard the three, I think is going to be really important for us. Um, and looking back at that Kentucky game, that's a little bit of a fire under us because we know what you know the outcome is if we're not able to guard that. Right over here on the right. Alexis, the Buffalo coach yesterday said they could not do anything to keep you off the glass. They said they got Tamari boxed out a couple times, but they could not stop you from getting on the board. She called you a juggernaut on the, on the glass. Just. How key and, – and Belmont, of course, knows Tennessee rebounds so well. Just how, how big of a factor are rebounds going to be tomorrow night? Um, it's going to be a big factor because I was watching that game yesterday and they were rebounding against, you know, Oregon. They tall and stuff. So it was just like we got to be – we got to have a lot of movement. So we got to just fight over those box outs. And we just got to still go grab those rebounds. Even if they're boxing us out, we just got to push a little harder. This is for both of you guys, but you know, I feel like anyone who's watched women's basketball the last few years, you know, realizes the, the kind of closing the gap between the mid-major teams and and the Power Five teams in the tournament. And especially this weekend, I feel like that has been apparent with both of you guys transferring in from mid-majors. What is that like for you to kind of see that maybe respect being given to these teams now in the tournament? Um, I think that now, like with the tournament play, um, any team in the tournament is capable, you know, of playing. They've won their conference and. Um, obviously that they can play. So I think that um, it's good for the mid-majors, but I also think that it's just kind of like it's March now. You know, everybody here, everybody in the tournament can play. So every single night you have to come out and play, no matter the opponent, where it's whether it's Power Five or mid-major or whoever. Any more questions for our student athletes right here? For both Alexis and Jordan, obviously you're not here to carry the burden of Tennessee teams past. You're aware of the history. T with that said, Tennessee has not been to a Sweet 16 since 2016. Would that be a meaningful milestone to be a part of, to get to get Tennessee back to that point for, for both of you? Uh, for, yes, I feel like it would be a, um, a beautiful milestone because for me, for me, I never been to a Sweet 16. I never passed the first round, actually. Um, and I'm pretty sure my um, teammates would, you know, love and cherish his memory forever if we were able to make it to a Sweet 16. Yeah, I think Snoop got it in the nutshell. Teresa, for both of you, while trying to deal with uh, getting on the uh, the boards and dealing with the inside game, Belmont. Uh, knocked down 12 threes last night and they shoot it uh, almost everyone can shoot it and knock it down what's the challenge when you're facing a team that can shoot it like that of making sure you're getting out and defending on them and, and, and while keeping them from you know uh, hurting you that way um, I think that that the challenge is um, chasing them off the three a little bit making them make contested threes versus just wide open threes um, I think that that's going to be a big difference um, with making you know threes for any team. If it's wide open, of course you can knock it down. But if it's contested or you're being chased off the line, I think it's a little bit harder. This for either of you guys, but I know we've talked about you know the adversity what this team has been through, and you know once was projected one seed very much 
everyone thought that this was just kind of a given that you guys were going to make this run. But given, you know, what you guys have been through, what does it mean to actually be at this moment and have that opportunity still in front of you to take? I think that, honestly, I think that this opportunity um, is perfect for us. Uh, I think, you know, with being able to win this game and going to the Sweet 16, like, it just kind of sums up, you know, the season that we've had. We've been through a lot, and I feel like if we continue to fight um, night in and night out, we'll be able to go as far as we want. And I feel like that's been something that we've been saying all year, but it's so true with this team. Like, if we just go out there and we do what we're supposed to do and we fight and give effort and play together, I really feel like this guy's the limit for us. For, for both players, Belmont, obviously, there's no pressure on them. They're playing Tennessee's home court. They're the, another Tennessee school. The pressure, of course, if you even choose to call it pressure, gets put on Tennessee. With that in mind, how important is a, is a good start for you guys? Because their fans are going to be here. It, it, it's going to be a pretty – should be a pretty raucous crowd. Um, I feel like a good start is what we need. But one thing is that we need to keep that, like, we don't need to let it die down because usually we let it die down and we get like comfortable and stuff like that. We just need to keep ramming it down their throats. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I just think that um, with a good start, we just need to keep that. But I think that um, now, and I was saying yesterday, I feel like the first 10 minutes usually kind of indicates how the game is going to go. Um, you start off really good. You keep pushing, you know, no matter what happens, I feel like that's going to determine the game. And obviously, you know, things can happen. But with this team, if we start off really good and we're, you know, hitting, I think that that's a good sign for us. Cora. Alexis, you know, obviously last year you guys played in the, in the tournament. But this year, you know, being at Tennessee and playing in your home court, you know, what's that been like for you? And I guess, you know, how much fun have you been having in, in March? Um, it's an advantage because, you know, we get the – we get our fans and things like that. We get our support, the people that keep us going and, you know, encourages us. Uh, I feel like it's critical because, you know, last year we didn't have many fans, but it's just like that atmosphere is just like it gives you a boost, you know. Any more questions for our student athletes? Okay. Thank you, Jordan and Alexis, for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> well, now I'll take questions for Tennessee head coach Kelly Harper. Coach, you know my standard one. What are the challenges of Belmont, and what, what do y'all face tomorrow night against them? Well, I think if you if you look at, at Belmont and what they're able to do, um, they are excellent and efficient on both ends of the court. They, you know, they can shoot it well. They pass it well. They are a low turnover team. They're very, very intelligent. They they make the right decision. And a lot of that is on the defensive end as well. And so, um, you know, I think they, they're not going to be intimidated. You look at their schedule. They've, they've played a tough schedule. Uh, they, they made a run last year. And um, this is a very experienced basketball team, and they're going to come out and fight and do what they do. And um, what they do has been pretty good. Down here in front on the left. Coach, Tyler Wommels with the Daily Times. We've talked about it before. You know, you're from Tennessee. You're the head coach of Tennessee's women's basketball team. When you're facing an in-state foe in the NCAA tournament, when you could play teams from across the country, what do you think that sort of says about, you know, basketball in this state? Well, obviously this is two good basketball teams playing against each other. Um, you know, there's, there's no doubt that, um, you know, they there's some of those players over there that are, you know, very good, very motivated to play their in-state team. Um, you know, uh, they're, it's, it, to me, it's, it could be a little bit more than just playing in the NCAA tournament, you know. Um, and so I think they'll, they'll be inspired and, and ready to go. Madison. Coach, just kind of following that, what do you think it just says to the game of women's basketball and to maybe little girls watching the game tomorrow to see two Tennessee teams, a mid-major and the legacy that the women's basketball team has here at Tennessee just competing? What do you? Th how special do you think that is? Well, I think it, it tells you how much better women's basketball has gotten. Uh, we talked a little bit about the parity. Um, you know, at, at this point, anybody can win and it um, does, doesn't matter what your league is. Uh, matters what you do now on the court and 
Um, there, there are a lot of really good teams, a lot of good teams that, um, that are probably better um, because they have some maybe fifth-year players. So I think we're seeing that across the board, you know. Um, but there, there's just a lot of – a lot of talent, a lot of talented teams, and especially in this state, I think when you when you look across the state, there's been some really good basketball played this year, and um, I think it is inspiring. You know, when I when I was growing up, there the the college teams were very successful in this state, and I think it you know gives you something to look at and to to follow. Over here on the right. Two quick questions. First, um, has there been any? update in Jordan Horson's status has she been able to participate anymore in practice no Jordan uh same uh same for her she can like I said the other day she can shoot some because she's uh, uh the injuries on her left elbow so she's been shooting but that's about it and then secondly um Bart was talking about last night about the more about the t chip on his team's shoulder there's players in that locker room that feel like they are maybe under recruited and you know you coach at Missouri State I'm sure you had players like that too how dangerous is a team like that when there's players who feel like they deserve better in the recruiting process? I know exactly what they're going through right now. I live that. I know exactly how motivated they are. I, I know exactly what that chip on their shoulder looks like. I've been there. And, and as a coach, I use that. So, um, you know, I, I, I saw, you know, they played last year. They want more than they did last year. That'd be, that'd be one more win. So, um, I get it. I get it. Here on the left. Oh, hey, Coach. Kelly Instance with WATE. The freshmen continue to contribute big minutes, 14 total points, four assists, 12 rebounds, two steals combined from them. How would you assess their play last night in their first NCAA tournament? Well, they I, I tell you, our freshmen go out, and they're typically pretty fearless. Um, you know, they go out, and they're, they're, they're trying to make plays, and – um, they, they made good plays. They, they made a few mistakes. But, um, you know, after the game, I kept thinking how much better they're going to be because they had that opportunity. And, um, you know, I'm really excited for them and how they're playing. We finished practice, and, um, and we have at least three of those freshmen out doing extra work, you know. So they're, they're very motivated. They're excited. Um, they're having a ball. I'll, I'll say this. They're having a ball. And that energy is contagious. You're on the right. Coach, you mentioned Belmont wants more than they got last year. Would, would the same apply to Tennessee because you got stopped in the second round? I mean, obviously the kids don't carry the burden of Tennessee. You know what the Tennessee burden is and what its expectations are. On the other side of this, do you use that as motivation for your team? Let's get to the, our first Sweet 16 for this program I since don't, I don't think I have 2016? To. Yeah, I don't think I have to, Maria. I think this is a motivated team. They, they want it for this team. You know, there's there's a lot, you know, when you start thinking about numbers and win this and you got to do this for the program. And, and I get it. I understand we carry that. That's that's part of being a Lady Vol. But this, this team, they want to win. They, they just want to win. They want to advance. And um, the good thing is they understand it's not going to be easy. And you, you got to go out there and earn it. So um, I, I think that's, that's the really – exciting piece about this team you know and how how competitive they are right now Kelly kind of asked you the same thing as the players you know at one point in the season people were picking your team as a final four favorite and after everything that happened the last you know month or two what does it mean to be at this moment what would it mean to, I guess to to you as a coach of this program um, to make the sweet 16 and to make that statement well you know I told the team today I just I love them I love them, and I'm thankful and grateful for them. And um, I appreciate all that they've done and, you know, what they've been through this year and the ups and downs um, hasn't changed them as people. And, you know, I get to go out and coach a team that plays hard every single possession, and they, they try. They, we'll make mistakes, and we, we may not make uh, every shot or, you know, we'll, we'll mess up, but – this is the team that I want to coach because uh, they will fight. They they will give us everything they've got, and I, and I just appreciate that for. And when you have that as a coach, I just want to see them succeed. I want to see them have that opportunity, you know. And um, it's a, it's a really special group, and and they've hung in there. They've hung in there this year, and would love to would love to keep coaching them for a little bit longer. 
Any more questions for Coach? Right here. The one thing about women's basketball, it's been seeking over, I'm going back a couple decades now, is parity. Do you, do you think we can safely say, looking at these scores across the country, particularly in these early rounds, that women's basketball has reached that point? I think th- I think there is a lot of parity in women's basketball, and I think – you know, going into this year, you could see um, a lot of talented teams and, you know, getting to the NCAA tournament and, and just seeing, you know, people are talking about upsets, upset. I don't know if it's upsets. You know, once you get to the tournament, it's this team's playing this team. It just happens to have a number in front of their name, you know, and it's it's more about matchups than numbers at that point. So I, I don't know how many upsets we've really seen. These teams are good. If you're in the NCAA tournament, you're there for a reason. You're there because you've won. You're there because you've passed a test, whether it's a conference tournament or you're, or you've passed a season-long test of, of, you know, showing your body of work is deserving of being there. Uh, but there's a lot of really good women's basketball teams right now. It's fun to watch uh, because you, you can't predict it. You don't know what's going to happen next. Just to follow up on that then, what's the challenge now of tr- maybe trying to grow the game, not just on the court, but, you know, growing fans and, and getting more support, uh, you know, across the whole sport? Uh, and and how, is there any concrete steps that you've thought of or that, that might be helpful or it, what could be next? Oh, I'm, yeah, I wish I, I wish I could give you a laundry list of items. Um, I'm, you know, there's a lot of people more creative than I am about how, how we can do those things, but um, I, I think – I think right now, just I feel like there's just a positive um, trajectory for women's basketball. I think again, I think we've got to find ways to build on um, the excitement that we've had. I mean, what what a what a great uh, first round that we've had. I mean, some really good games, some some exciting basketball, some exciting individual players, some exciting teams. I think we just have to continue to grow on what what our product is, and you know, continue to talk about it. Uh, continue to brag on it, and and hopefully people t- will tune in. If you like sports, you got to tune in to women's basketball because it's worth it. It's good. You're on the right, Kelly. Obviously, different team than last year, but if you had to maybe sum it up or pinpoint something, what do you feel like would be the difference in why this team will be the one to make it to the Sweet 16? Um, you know, this team for us has uh, we have a lot of grit. Uh, I do think we have a little bit more experience now. You know, I think the NCAA tournament last year was great for us to have that experience, both the positive and the negative. And, um, you know, our, our returners can th- can think back and, and, and remember what that looks like. But, you know, I just – I think their, their toughness and their grit, uh, their competitiveness is, is what gives them an opportunity to win basketball games. We've got time for one more question. All right. Thank you, Coach, for joining us. All right. Thank you, guys.